everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Brianna, if you're new, and welcome back if you've been here before and you're a subscriber. Um, today's video is gonna be a little bit different. Um, I put a lot of makeup and mommy stuff on my channel now, um, but today I am talking about something really close to my heart. Um, October, if you didn't know, is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. I know that a lot of people know that October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which is also a very important cause. And my heart goes out to those, anyone that's been affected by breast cancer or suffered from breast cancer. But it's also, like I said, Pregnancy and Infant Awareness, Infant Loss Awareness Month. And it's very special and important to me because I have suffered from pregnancy loss and one of those losses, I lost my daughter and she was 19 weeks, I was 19 weeks pregnant. So I was pretty far along in my pregnancy. So I want to do a four part series on my channel for the month of October. One video every week going into um, talking about it, how I like coped, moved on, healed how it affected me, everything God did for me to help me to heal from it. And then the last video will be about my rainbow baby because I did end up having a baby after I had suffered from pregnancy loss. And I just feel like it's important to put that in there so people know that you have something to look forward to and know that God does bless and hear our prayers because I just went through a lot leading up to that point. And I do now, my husband and I have a daughter, she's one years old. Today's video though, I'm just gonna talk about the story of losing my daughter at 19 weeks because I haven't really talked about it before at all publicly. Um, her last birthday, I did for the first time mention it publicly on my Instagram and Facebook and I just feel like I'm in a place in my life where I'm supposed to talk about it and help other people that maybe other women that may be suffering from pregnancy loss, especially um, pregnancy loss really far along or um, that that have been through it or are currently going through it and just need somebody to that relates with them just hope that if there's anybody out there that has suffered or is suffering from pregnancy or infant loss then they can find this video and relate to this video as well um so i'm just gonna just go right into the story because i don't want this video to be super long um i lost my daughter at 19 weeks in 2015 my husband my now husband and i was our child her name is madison um it was a baby girl i was that far along um we found out at 16 weeks that it was a girl but what happened was that one night i just um had real bad lower lower back pain and um i had I did call my doctor and just based on the symptoms I were having, they said it sounded like I had a kidney infection and they prescribed me something, an antibiotic for that. Now, mind you, I did change the doctors after that because I felt like anytime a pregnant woman is having um, issues where it's like lower back pain, um, cramping, sick, I was nauseous, you know, things that aren't regular pregnancy symptoms, they should probably bring you in and have you checked out or tell you to go to the ER, which my now doctor would definitely, doctor's office would definitely say, but that doctor's office I was at, I feel like did not give me proper care. But, um, so I had lower back pain and I was nauseous. I was so sick and I was having chills. And then, um, I ended up getting up to take a shower because I just like, John, my husband, was telling me to take a shower to see if that would help. And before, right like when I got up, or I think I went to use the restroom before I went to take a shower, I started to have like water pouring out of me. And that water was amniotic fluid, I know now. But essentially I went into labor and didn't even know it, it was preterm labor. Um, fast forward a little bit, I lost her because they said I got infection into my placenta and uh, it caused me to go into preterm labor that night. So that's what happened. But rewind a little bit. Um, I had had bleeding my entire pregnancy with Madison. Um, they never could find out why. I had multiple doctor's appointments. I went in on like almost every week. I had to quit my job. It was just so much going on and um, they never knew why I had that bleeding to this day. I don't know why I had that bleeding, but they said that they kept referring to a lady every time I would go to the hospital or the doctor's office um, 
that they had been seeing that had the same issue and they never figured out why she had been bleeding but she had just given birth to a healthy baby so that was reassuring and that was awesome for them to you know tell me that like don't give up just because you're having this bleeding but so I never figured out why I was having that so in retrospect the doctor told me after I lost Madison that me having that bleeding had made it a little bit harder than it would someone who was having a normal pregnancy um, to, for my body to fight off the infection that somehow got to my placenta. Bad bacteria, a whole lot of scientific doctory stuff is what they told me. Um, so I'm not really clear on how I got the infection, not clear at all why I had bleeding. Just a bunch of stuff happened with that pregnancy, but I did... Um, found out I was having a girl um, at 16 weeks and then at 19 weeks I did go into premature labor and lose her. Um, that night I went into the hospital and had back, I know what it is now, but I was having back labor. Um, that was the lower back pain and all of that. The worst type of labor ever. Um, anybody that's had back labor can tell you that, but I was having back labor and we went to the hospital obviously um when it's the flu it started coming out and i was in labor i mean it was awful john will tell you like he'd never seen me like that like i could tell on his face he was like what is going on somebody needs to help my wife well i wasn't we weren't married at the time we were engaged but um he was just like what is going on so he went to the uh, I told him I was like go get a nurse and all that it was a mess I didn't have her that night uh, some a doctor had come in and told me they checked me and all that and told me her head was down and that I would have to deliver her because her head was already down and she was already in position and that was the worst news I have ever heard because I had heard stories previously of women that went into preterm labor or early labor but they were able to able to excuse me they were able to either stop the labor or just have them stay in the hospital until it was time to deliver. There was just other options I'd heard people had taken, even drastic ones, to where women had to just stay, lay in bed with their feet up and had a catheter in, you know, until the baby was, you know, big enough to, and developed enough to be born. So I felt like they kinda, and I don't know, you know, as a doctor or whatever what was going on I didn't have a lot of details and like I said I just changed doctor's office and all that because the doctor that like checked me out and all of that was the one that was from my office and I felt like they didn't do everything they could and should have to save her I still feel like that or to exhaust all my options before just saying okay well you're gonna deliver her and it's done but yeah so my husband and I stayed in the hospital that night they gave me um, medication I didn't have an epidural but they did give me medication to help with the pain because like I said I was having back labor and that the next morning is when I delivered her and it was my husband and my sister she had come I have three sisters one of my sisters were 11 months apart she came and it was her and my husband in the delivery room when I had Madison, I delivered her like my now rainbow baby daughter, London, the exact same way. I had to push, they cut the umbilical cord, my husband cut the umbilical cord. Um, only difference was that when she came out, John saw her before I did. I like went into a place I'd never been before. It's the worst thing that's ever happened to me and I stand by that. And I like was just in tears and heartbroken and like I just it all came out as soon as she came out so John saw her and he said that he she was alive when she came out and he saw that thank God I didn't because I would have made it 50 million times worse to have that like burned in my brain and then they gave it to me and she did pass away um, obviously because she was only 19 weeks gestation and I was like one day shy of being 20 weeks and um, they had to call it a miscarriage because I wasn't 20 weeks exactly yet and at 20 weeks is when it's consider considered a stillborn and anything before 20 weeks is considered miscarriage. So I have this little baby girl that I know is a girl that has her arms, her legs, her fingers, her toes, her nose, her mouth, her eyes, everything. She's just not fully developed yet and they are considering it a miscarriage. It just felt oh, to me, not to lessen anybody's pain that's suffers from early miscarriage because it's all painful but I just felt like 
she I have this baby and you're just gonna classify this as just a miscarriage it was awful um, I went through periods of hurt pain anger I am a Christian Christian woman I believe in God believe in Jesus Christ believe in the Holy Spirit and at that moment I was just like God where are you like you know you knew this was gonna happen you know what happened you were here but why can't you stop it like I had that time and I believe when you're hurting and you and I'm smiling now because I've come a long way that's going through that just helped me become who I am today and so now I can say that yes I still hurt and I miss Madison so much she's my baby girl I love her and I wish she was here but I grew so much and learned so much during that time that and I'm on the other side of it, you know? So I can see things that I clearly couldn't see then, but I went through hurt and anger and pain and resentment and all of those feelings. Me and John went through so much and the fact that we got through it is another testament in itself and, um, and that we didn't end up breaking up and going our separate ways because that easily could have happened when you have a loss, especially your child. <sighs> it was a lot on him, it was a lot on me. I felt like he wasn't dealing with it the way he should have as a woman you know we tend to be a little more emotional and I feel like he maybe had he wanted to deal with it in his way as a man and so we butted heads on that but thank God we got through that too but it was awful one of the worst things that I love her dearly and I do teach London about her big sister and if that's important to me to teach my children that they have an older sibling and that her memory will never be forgotten and it was a time in my life that I really was heartbroken and when you go through things like that you really find out who's for you and who's with you and my mom was a big help because she has suffered from pregnancy loss so it was good to be able to talk to her. I had a few friends that checked on me regularly um, too that are just they are so amazing um, and that helped as well but I did feel like people that I was talking to really didn't understand because I felt like the situation, like I said, I had this baby, a baby. I delivered her like I would have just a few months later. And um, it's an experience that I would never ever want anyone else to experience. And because I know that we live in a fallen world and sometimes other women do go through that, I hope that with this video and me sharing my story that you know, if you're watching this and you currently are suffering or have suffered from a similar situation just know that there's other women out there that have as well and that you're not alone that God is a healer and he is the one that got me through it he is the one who kept me he's the one that healed my heart my heartbrokenness who helped me to move forward to see the light at the end of the tum tunnel to know that it's not over until he says it's over um, to know that she's in a much better place that I will get to see her again that my heart would be healed um, just so much and I remember the day that I finally just came out of my basically funk depression and I pulled myself out and I remember this the scripture of um, it's a scripture I'll put it on the screen of that talks about him pulling us out of the slimy mire you lifted me out of the slimy mire I believe it's in Psalms and um, that one was the first one when I decided to finally open my Bible again because there was a period when I was like I didn't want to read my Bible I didn't want to read my devotions I didn't want to pray I said the bare minimum when I prayed Lord protect myself and John and that was about it because I was angry with God and then I came to a place of hurt and sadness and pain but I had to understand that he understood my pain and he knew what I was feeling what I was going through and that when I cried he cried and when I hurt he hurt and um, man it was awesome but I'm going to talk about more about that in my video that I'm posting um, about how I got through it the healing and trusting God after pregnancy loss so be sure to check that one out but I just wanted to share this story um, for anyone that may need to relate to someone who's gone through it and feel free if you want to ask any questions or if you need someone to talk to feel free to message me down below or DM me on Instagram or Twitter I'll leave all my links in the description box if you just need someone to talk to um, that was my story of losing my daughter and I am so happy to be in a place where I can share and help other women make sure you keep up with my series because I'm going to be sharing a lot more about this topic for the whole month of October one video every week about this and 
I hope that I'm able to bless someone in some way. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.